A golem and the warden in from the right. What on earth? <laughs> what is this? What is this LP? He's all over the place. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the Zolo Cup semi-finals match there are four teams left in the competition after about 200 to 250 teams signed up to play in the zolo cup put on by the youtuber zoloco out of the spanish community huge uh influence on the community there and love the work that he does but let's see if gaku can start us off with the queen walkers the teams that remain in the competition in this semifinals is obviously queen walkers and renegados the other semifinals is strut esports and clash champs so we'll see who ultimately makes it to the grand finals as gaku starts us off here with a warden walk into electro titan attack here with some lightning as well we'll use lightning to take out that monolith which by the way if you guys didn't see in your in-game news tab today, the Poison Towers are taking a nerf. So is the Monolith with some balance update changes that just got announced today. So definitely go check those out there in your news tab there if you haven't already. Also some small changes to like the skeleton barrels onto the clan capital that nobody really cares about. But uh, yeah, biggest things that we saw out of that was the... the Poison Lizard that we just saw Gaku using actually has a larger aggro radius, so it can actually lock onto defensive heroes. That's not that's not the way that he used it here, but it is a important change there that might have an impact and may encourage more people to use that Poison Lizard, which right now is the least utilized troop that is, uh, or the new the least utilized pet in the meta right now, except for maybe Lassie. <laughs> Uh, Alright, well, Gaku making a strong push through the town hall here. The Flame Flinger was able to take out the Eagle Artillery and the King still working down south there. A Headhunter joined him to get through the defensive King. Now the World Champion can start to make her through, way through now that the defensive King is out of the way there. But his ward is getting targeted by the single Inferno. And that's going to go full beam and take him down. Doesn't have any more freezes, so there was no option to save that. But Diggy should stun up the single Inferno here and stop it from claiming any more victims. But it looks like that King able to clear out the Expos in the... the right side of the base there and now the queen will take the lead here as the world champion goes through and picks off all the defenses that she can stun as she makes her way through pops her ability gets some assistance for the queen breaks off to the right stuns up that cannon as well which is working on the outside wiz is working on the outside king still moving strong queen closing all the way to the attacker now joined by some yetis coming out of that flame flinger that finally opens up at the very end of the attack there and diggy will stun this last arch tower and claim his first victim esteban goes down to Gakko's flawless Zap Electro Titan Smash Attack. December balance changes are nerfing the Monolith by looks like 2% on its overall damage. So just a slight damage decrease. It should still be strong, but maybe, I don't know. <laughs> you can survive an extra strike over the course of your entire HP bar. The Spell Tower is getting a 10% reduction in the attack speed reduction, which Obviously help out a lot of people when they're trying to do a Sui Lalo or something like that when they're trying to snipe off the Town Hall because that does stop up your Queen's attack speed and it really, really slows down a lot of attacks there, especially when you're going through the core of a base like this. But let's see if Santiago can take down Klaus's anti-two-star base. Super Bullers are his troop of choice here. So starting with the Warden Walk using the Frosty. Frosty will slow down the attack speed of the defenses that the Warden is striking there. But Frosty doesn't have a lot of damage output. I think that's why uh, Gaku started off with the Poison Lizard is because Poison Lizard does have a lot of damage output. It is a very uh, vulnerable pet there, but it does actually dish out a pretty solid amount of damage. So that's not uh, seeming to be Santiago's concern here. Doesn't have the biggest impact what pet you choose to throw in your Warden Walk, but other pets that he has set here are the Phoenix on the King. And, of course, the Diggy on the World Champion, and he popped a Hero Potion to try to get a higher level Phoenix here. But he will have the Warden engage the Defensive Queen inside of the Rage. He will win that fight. Barely. Barely. But he's fine. He's fine. He used a full minute onto this Warden Walk, and... Wait, what's going on up here? Oh, at the same time, the Flame Flicker was coming to the top of the base there, and it looks like it must have run into some problems up there, but the Yeti might have thrown it at that, that Scattershot and are able to take it down, so... Would have ended up missing that scatter shot there, but he gets it under control here, and Yetis will just kind of coast over there on the opposite side of the base and get whatever they're going to end up getting. Maybe that that uh, air defense, kind of inconsequential at this point, but the king will collapse in the right-hand corner and work with the witches out there. The king has the phoenix, like I mentioned, so he should be 
able to get that funnel very, very solidly established. Even if he takes some extra damage over there, but the monolith is going to the the bowlers, it looks like. As he makes his way to the core of the base here, looks like some ice golems and a lava hound come out on defense. That's not going to be a problem. He does secure the town hall takedown, and you know, as he strikes the defensive CC, he hits the town hall as well because of the splash damage of the super bowlers. Bring on a big chunk of the base there. Goes in, frees up the defensive world champion. Clears the way here for his king. His king is under the phoenix right now. I don't know if he needed that freeze, but better safe than sorry, I guess. How's his queen doing? Queen in the middle base there. Going to start to make her push towards the single inferno. The bowler in the middle has the healer as she goes into this multi-inferno. The world champions start to dip around here. The diggy's still intact. Stun up to expo. Queen pops her ability. Takes the inferno down. Baby dragons and blooms into the backside arch towers. And it looks like he's got enough if he's got the time. Time is my only concern right now. But he's got a world champion ability. I think he's okay on time. He can go and pop at any point here. Or he can hold on to it to try to get the last little bit of cleanup. Whatever the straggling buildings are. And he'll just go ahead and pop it to clear out that quarter there and start to work his way back. There there we go. Santiago will match the triple from Gaku with a triple of his own. A very nice Super Bowler smash attack there, followed by, or following, I guess, the Electro Titan smash. Two very strong attacks in the middle right now. Kazuma will strike next here for the Queen Walkers. He's got a Queen Charge into Lalo. Has one Electro Titan into the mix here. I assume to go with the King and the World Champion wherever they're deploying. He's got a log launcher, so he's actually, you know what? I, I kind of like this for these diamond style bases. When we go in with the the king, royal champion, and grand warden kill squad, and then the queen wraps around it, using the queen to form a little bit of a funnel. But look at the look at the value for this lane of defenses for a log launcher to mow down. If he throws in the warden, the royal champion, and the log launcher to all work through that area together then he can just clear out a huge swath of defenses and then focus almost every single one of the spells onto the queen to wrap south, cross the base, and make her way to the town hall. But there are only two wall breakers that he has in this attack here. He threw down the skeleton spell onto the single inferno to make sure nobody gets targeted as they hang out nearby. The king goes north and the log launcher will go right down the middle. Right now, not using the royal champion nor his or his uh, Grand Warden there and just let that Log Launcher do all the work there without the additional investment. So that does free up a lot of options. I really like that. Looks like Yetis will pop out and he'll have the Rocket Bloons search forward to get the last shot onto that Scatter Shot and then the Rocket Bloons on defense will end up popping these Yetis and throw them into that other Ground Expo. The Queen taking some damage down south there but that Expo up top there does go down. The King has just about... Uh, run out of HP up to the top there. He's going to go down and the CC will start to cross through. One part of the CC already approached the Queen. Just one super minion. Down south, an Electric Titan was able to form the funnel there. Gets into the defensive world champion. There's the wall break. But it's all the way down the line there where the Queen is going to have to round into it. I don't know what path she's going to take here exactly, but it's going to take her a minute to decide whether she wants to go through that or not. But he is not going to waste any time there. He goes ahead and wall breaks into the Inferno and gives the Queen earlier access into that town hall. Overall, very good here so far. Still has the Lalo with the Roar Champion and the Warden on standby. This is looking really solid. As soon as that Town Hall goes down, I don't think there's a lot that can stop this attack here other than the timer. But it has a Rage Tower on defense. A big test of armor over there. That's not going to be a problem. Monolith will get powered through over there as well. As he just pops out Ward ability, stopping all damage, including the Poison Tower that's through over there. And he's looking really, really clean here. The Queen is taking some damage. But she's going to get healed back up now as all the defenses in that area go down. He just needs to get the defensive world champion dealt with. But he lost all of his bloods. What the heck happened over there? The world champion is picking up the slack there. The warden gets taken out as well. No, wait. No, I take the fact the warden's on ground. Here comes the headhunters to go out to the defensive queen. Freeze up the ground X or the uh, double cannon, I mean. Freeze up the defensive queen. Diggy stuns, but not stunning the queen. You can't stun defensive heroes. He's really cut it close on time now. He's the RC ability to pop here, get the rest of the defenses down. Wait, I take that back. Time is not an issue. Kazuma locks in another one with a swag queen ability after a crazy queen charge kill squad into Lalo. Armando will strike for Renegados for their second attack here. Looks like he's doing a blizzard into Electro Titan Smash. Doesn't necessarily have to take the town hall with the blizzard here, but he does need to form a very clean funnel. He'll send in the Warden to try to push it all the way to the base here. With this approach, the Poison Tower potentially will 
end up throwing at the blimp here. So he needs to get it to the throw and he needs to land on the other side of the poison tower. So he does open up near the town hall as he's standing inside of the poison tower. I can't tell, but the rock balloons are also protected by the ward ability. We'll get that expo down. The super wizards attack the town hall forward, stand outside of the poison, grab out the scatter shot as well. And now the defensive ice golems will freeze them up here, but they're gonna round through the town poison. Stop wasting invisibilities there. You're not getting any more than less invisibility. Didn't get any value. Warden will survive and go join with the queen, but he'll get shot down by the air defense, so that was short-lived. That's okay. Doesn't need the warden here. Electric Titans have a lot of HP, and they can survive just fine without the warden. Although you do lose the warden's damage output. It was worth it to get all those key targets down, though. Would like to see in a wall breaker in that, that blimp, though, so we could have uh, transitioned down to the Inferno and the Poison Tower without having to run through the Town Hall Poison. But nothing he can do about that now. Electro Titans get a wall break on the outside of the base over there. That might, that might let the King out of the base, though, as he makes his way into that multi Inferno. The King has the Frosty. The King with the Frosty is a good choice of pet here because the king ends up surviving a lot longer in an attack like this so frosty has more value than a phoenix does and he still has yet to deploy his world champion the headhunters arrive right in time to get through the defensive king perfect timing on that queen taking some heavy damage from that expo though does end up having to go to ability the king will circle in and take the inner pet nope just kidding he, he goes back out he he faked us out there for a second the queen is not going to get him out in front now and she's going to take a shot from the scatter shot and goes down Still has the defensive queen on the backside of the base here. Plenty of time left. Running low on troops, though. Lots of base left here. I don't know if he's going to make it through. I highly doubt he will make it through at this point here. A pop that king ability. Electro Titans are trying to catch up, but they're all stuck on the outside in the trash. They got the one healer left with them. He'll go ahead and engage the defensive queen, but that's with his world champion, and she's going to get absolutely shredded by that. The king will keep on marching through. Electro Titans finally come back into the base there. He's got so much force moving here. I just don't think he has the force to get through walls and get to the single inferno. So take the poison tower there. He's starting to dwindle down. 88% will be the final here. Striking next to the Queen Walkers. Now with the lead will be LP. With a Queen Charge zap into Lalo. Typically when we do Queen Charge with Lightning, we typically pair it with these Dragon Riders. But in this case, he decides to break out the Lalo. The Lalo is going to have very, very little spell support. Which does make me a little, a little bit nervous here, but he'll get the funnel form there with that baby dragon and drive the queen towards the town hall. Take down that monolith and the invisibility tower on his approach. Make sure they're not going to affect his attack later on. Engage the defensive king right away here, and the flame flinger will deploy while the queen controls the targeting of this mortar. And will start to make its way off to the right there. The flame flinger is damaging up that mortar with the fire damage on the ground, and get that down and. Get the Queen funneled a little bit better there, although he would have potentially liked that Mortar to stay standing to help drive the Queen into the base there. So he has to burn an Invisibility to get her to take the turn. She does go directly to the Town Hall with that Invisibility, so nice redirect right there. Gonna get distracted onto these Ground Skellies for just a moment while the Flame Flinger continues to work off to the right up at the top of the base there. Oh, I didn't even notice that. The King was collapsing in to get the Eagle Artillery down with the Phoenix. And we, we completely weren't even looking in that direction, but uh, LP is over here multitasking. Also got the defensive CC pull out of that. You got the defensive queen down with the Phoenix making that king invincible for a little bit. So a uh, nice pickup right there. Now deploys in a golem and the warden in from the right. What on earth? <laughs> what is this? What is this LP? He's all over the place. Now, throw it in the world champion. Join in with this Warden and Golem to go out to this scatter shot while the Flame Flinger finishes off the multi inferno. The Queen is able to tag off that Poison Tower now. And over on the far left side of the base, they're already funneling to get the Queen to take the turn over to the scatter shot. He has no wall breakers to get her into the multi inferno in the middle there, but she's starting to run low on spells and she goes down through her ability to the scatter shot fire so that's a bit of a problem now he's gonna be running into some problems here but the ward ability does protect the world champion she surges across the middle of the base there she will rage up and try to get into this single inferno she does directly target it the diggy stuns it gets the expo down world champion still working or was still working she's Looking like she's down now, but the Warden will pick up where she left off. And the Bloons and the Dragon Rider 
and Rocket Bloons that came out of the Flame Flinger will continue in the last couple defenses. Apparently didn't need his queen to get the job done. LP, complete mastery over a custom army, and he completely picked that base apart. Nice job, and the Queen Walkers have three on the board. And here we go. Mr. Jeff is live for Renegados. We have a Hydra attack here, a little bit of lightning. I don't see as much Hydra nowadays. We just got a little bit of lightning. They take out the sweeper. And I assume you come in either down by the lab over here or you go in through the Eagle Artillery to start off. If he comes in at the Eagle Artillery, he's going to have a very long blimp path across the base to reach across and secure the Town Hall takedown. So that does worry me a little bit here. Running classic pets here with the max level diggy. He drag forms the foot on the right side of the base there and will get directly targeted under the arch tower. Get a nice shot. The arch tower down. Damage up to Tesla. Doesn't get a full uh, funnel there, but it's enough to get the heroes to walk in and get the eagle artillery out of the way. And everybody else will surge in from the left side. Catches all the dragons and dragon riders inside of the ward ability with side by side rages. Very similar to how we do these electro dragon attacks here, but maybe he didn't believe in the chains there to run electro dragons. We'll go ahead and send in the blimp in from the bottom base there of Rocket Balloon and the trail damage of the blimp there with the crash damage. Able to take that air defense down. Land safely at the Town Hall. Goes ahead and rages that Town Hall takedown up as it looks like Yetis and Sneaky Goblins pop out of there. Able to get that down and the Yeti might throw at that uh, Expo as well and they're going to take that Expo out which is good. Over from the far right side here, he engages the defensive world champion. Doesn't have a lot of force into the world champion right now and he's kind of struggling but a Dragon Runner has passed him up and tried to get the scatter shot down. Gets taken out as well. That's the monolith up in the middle base there. The monolith is going to claim the warden here. What kind of chances does he still have? Queen circles to the outside. Diggy working with the world champion. will start her way in from the top corner. And the monolith is going to cause some problems for her. Diggy goes to transfer over to the queen. If the world champion goes down. And this one is quickly falling apart. And that, my friends, is why we're not seeing a lot of dragons in the meta right now. Dragons are very difficult to get to work. And it's not going to work in this case. They're just not nearly as strong as they once were, and the players who still rely on them definitely gambling every time they pull them out here. I'm gonna go ahead and freeze up to protect his queen just a little bit longer. Then he need to drive his queen off to the side of the base and get the percentage up a little bit here, but Renegados is gonna be down by two stars. 91% will be the final. I am interested to see if the slight nerf to the poison towers and the monolith make dragons a little bit more viable in the meta right now but right now the poison tower is slowing up their attack speed and then the monolith picking them off there is very difficult for them to move through and attacks with healers and attacks with smaller lighter troops like balloons and hogs and miners tend to be performing better as a result the queen walkers currently pushing for a perfect war here in the semifinals now and stars will try to Set Klaus up to be able to achieve that. Let's see if we can make it happen here. See, he gets ready for a blizzard. No, I take it back. Skelly Donut into Lalo. Get started with the CC and Inferno takedown here. Does he get the? He might get the Eagle Artillery out of that as well because Eagle Artillery is gonna stick out one tile extra past that Inferno, and he can potentially get both there. And it does look like he indeed. Oh, yep, he does. Okay, I thought the scatter shots. I thought the scatter shots were gonna stop that eagle artillery from going down, but looks like at the top of the base here, the flame flinger is collapsing in up there. There are expos and a mortar up in ahead here, so I'm curious to see how he ultimately deals with those. The flame flinger will be completely opposite of the king and the queen coming from the very bottom of the base. There's a golem providing some tanking for the queen and the king will duck into that compartment with the simple funnel and will drive the queen off to the right to go handle that multi inferno and the king even gets the poison tower to throw him and then walks away from it to go south skeleton spell comes down for the king to get in front of the royal champion and give some protection through that defensive queen a couple balloons coming down to deal with the tests on the outside of the base there nice reaction the defensive queen engaged there goes ahead and freezes her up there to make sure the diggy and the queen First, I mean, Diggy and the World Champion are not getting targeted by the Defensive Queen. Able to get her down. Diggy's still uh, intact there with full HP. Our Champion's still moving strong. King takes the lead one more time here. And we'll take the Monolith Strikes, but he's got the Phoenix, so he'll... Oh, wait. Ah, Road Champion got switched over. The Monolith did end up switching over to the World Champion instead of staying on the King. 
It will come back out, and the Phoenix will take the lead, and the World Champion will step all the way to the Town Hall. Poison, or Invisibility Tower, that's not good. Okay, he's gonna skip the Town Hall here, that's not what he wanted. Now he pops the Wardability as the Invisibility Tower wears off, and he does secure the Town Hall takedown. The Haze will try to get him out of the Town Hall Poison over the far right side of the base. So the Queen is still alive and moving, found a little bit of safety as she broke to the outside of the base. The Phoenix off of the King uh, is able to actually tank the scatter shot on his final approach. He still had a lot of hound on standby. Flame Flinger finally opens up. How on earth? Did he keep that Flame Flinger alive? I lost track of it up at the top there, and it just now opens up into a Drag Rider and a handful of balloons, reinforces the backside, and Stars puts a fourth triple on the board here, and the Queen Walkers are going for the perfect war now, putting it nearly out of reach here for Renegados. The Flame Flinger was engaging those critical defenses the same time the Lala was arriving, so it never actually took any damage over there from the expo, so he just timed it so perfectly that it just never took damage up there. That's kind of insane. I think he even manually opened it because it survived for so long. Esteban will attempt a Queen Charge into Dragon Riders here. Typically when we see Queen Charge into Dragon Riders, we see it paired with Lightning to try to reinforce a Queen Charge to take out some critical defenses, but he'll just start with a couple of Rocket Bloons. And a blimp to go secure the town hall takedown. Does that pull the CC? That does not pull the CC. Maybe he gets a pull out of it when the CC releases and goes forward past the town hall. But I don't think he actually does. Maybe a partial pull. Nope. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay, so CC remains inside of there. And the queen will get funneled into the multi inferno on the left side of the base there and charge the monolith. I feel like I've seen this base before. I feel like, um, who was it? I think Stars ran this base last time we saw them play against Tribe Gaming, and I'm pretty sure it was, I want to say Fluxy, that tried to do this exact Queen Charge, and he got wrecked by the Traps in Sirius, so I'm a little bit skeptical about this. The Monolith is a lot of damage right there, two ground Expos, scatter shots on both sides, enormous amounts of value but a very, very extremely difficult Queen Charge. He's managing it well, though. He's managing it very well. Dragon Runner ends up picking up the tanking of that Monolith and giving the Queen a little bit of a break there. He's able to get through it. Dragon Runners get the Ward Ability over the right side, paired with the Roar Champion to get into the defensive Roar Champion and get her down with that set of Headhunters. And the Roar Champion will keep moving to the middle of the base here while the Dragon Runners swing off to the bottom side and will clear out those external defenses. But looks like he's got the CC pull coming out now. Another tie in is not going to be a problem here for the world champion. It will slow her down a bit though and stall her up for a while. But it's not going to straight up kill her. And she's under relatively small amounts of damage. But he does end up losing his queen to the defensive queen. And so after what a uh, after a queen charge that Tribe Gaming was not able to pull off on this base there. He did clear the section of the base where they failed, but then died in a different portion as he ran out of spells to protect his queen. And he'll now try to gather what he can here, but the bases from the Queen Walkers prove once again that they can run burn bases, but their bases are just so sound that they're able to get the triples and the defenses all throughout the war here. And now, with the war out of reach here for Renegados, let's see if Klaus can close it and lock in a perfect war while also setting the Queen Walkers into the Grand Finals of the Zolo Cup. Klaus is live. Going for the perfect war. Klaus is live and he'll try to lock it in here and send his team on to face the winner of Strut Esports and Class Champs who both played in the World Championship. Not Class Champs under their new name there, but they played under the name Space Station Game of the World Championship. So their path is not done yet, as that Grand Finals will be a best of two. But at least they can lock in this win here. We'll see what he can do. Klaus will zap out the defenses in the Town Hall compartment. Getting out the Poison Tower. A minimal spell investment there. Doesn't need a huge amount of spells to just take out a couple of those critical defenses right there. And this is important right here because the poison tower that was right by the town hall would slow down the queen's attack speed so much that she may not be able to take it with the Subi. So the nerf 
that is coming to the poison tower would potentially make this lightning that he just used not necessary to get the queen in there to take the town hall down because she would be able to take it even with the poison tower slowing down her attack speed because uh, it's going to be reduced to 25%. So those nerfs there make the queen markers even stronger than they already are. But he does get the CC pull there with his queen. Little rock balloons and ice golems come out of there. As the king and the world champion continue on, but the world champion does get targeted by the model. The king ends up uh, popping the phoenix there and will have the world champion pass off that diggy over to join him for just a moment. Not gonna last very long though. Eight seconds goes by quick here in these attacks. That's all the phoenix provides, but sometimes eight seconds extra for the world champion protection can make all the difference in the world there. Does have the Lalo making their way into the multi inferno here? Needs a freeze onto the artillery and that. Multi Inferno taking some traps in the area. The defensive queen over on the left side will not have the protection of the ward ability, so that's going to be a little problem. The blimp sails through, will land on top of the Multi Inferno, and looks like some Yetis inside. Notice how the Yetis were purposely getting over the wall into the Eagle Artillery compartment so they can continue on and try to get this monolith down. The Poison Tower did end up getting thrown at them, and they will end up missing the monolith as a result here, so he's not quite out of this yet. Well, a decent number of balloons alive, but they are taking some traps there as they make their way to the final approach into the monolith. Coming in behind the sweeper, takes the monolith down, takes some traps in the process. Last builder hunt goes down, and Klaus picks up the perfect war. And the Queen Walkers completely dominate this match here. Four, no, 15 stars on the board. And they give Renegado zero opportunities to have any chance of moving on to that Grand Finals. That was a shutout here by the Queen Walkers, and that's happened a lot lately. A lot of teams are really struggling. There we go, Klaus. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> oh, man. All right. All right. Nice job, Queen Walkers. Nice win.